hello. I'm here also to welcome all of you. Uh, that's so nice that there are so many of you at 4 p.m. that you are really interested. Although we start with hate speech, but I hope that you will be engaged and after this topic you will not use any abusive words on the internet. I really hope so. So, uh, my name is Daria Stetsenko. Uh, I am an NLP engineer and also a computational linguist at NASC National Research Institute. And when we started, well, dealing with our topic, we had a few assumptions and a few hypotheses that we actually wanted to either prove or neglect at the end. And the first thing that we needed to determine what is hate speech. What is the difference between hate speech, offensive language, bullying, and other stuff that you can deal with uh, and you can see on the internet. And now I ask you at 4 p.m. try to uh, tell whether these sentences are offensive or neutral to you. And I just, uh, I just want you to vote uh, as soon as I read the sentence. So the first one, you should know women's sports are a joke. Whether it is offensive, who is for offensive? Okay, neutral. Okay, those who uh, didn't actually decide. Okay, so we have them. Uh, all mental illnesses are awful and must be treated. This is offensive language, who is for that? Okay, uh, neutral. Good, and then not decided. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, men and women are not equal. Irrational, contrary belief and policy only result in mounting failure. This is offensive. Who is for offensive? Okay, neutral. Not decided. Okay. Uh, and the last one, you look like someone who would do an electric wheelchair race with Stephen Hawking. Who is for offensive? Well, this is offensive. Uh, and neutral? Okay, not decided. Yes, so as you can see, a lot of people actually for some sentences could not make up their mind whether this is offensive or this is neutral. That's what it comes when we actually label the data. So we can't say that we are 100 positive that this is offensive or we are 100 positive that this is neutral. This is the hard topic for data and also a hard topic for actually regular, regularize what is hate speech. We see on this slide that the Twitter rules for the hate speech and they determined hate speech in 2020 uh, that it's actually something connected with race, ethnicity, or national origin, and this is something that's specific for group characteristics such as gender, religion, or ethnicity. Another example for Facebook community standards that actually stated that hate speech is a direct attack against people on the basis of protected characteristics, and what is a direct attack is also an ambiguous question. So, in another paper, we stumbled upon the, this characteristics of tweets or any data, that, like written data, that you can account on the internet, that this data should have these intrinsic characteristics. You see that there are a lot of them, but there is still a growing number of occurrences of more and more characteristics and peculiarities to distinguish offensive, neutral, hate, bullying on the internet, and this is why should we care about this? Because there was an incident in 2016 when Microsoft, maybe some of you know about this story, the T-Tweets, uh, the Microsoft AI chatbot that existed only for 16 hours and it was shut down because of misogynistic content, hate speech and offensive language because it was taught by people. People started feeding the chatbot with data that was rude and offensive and we ended up having such quotes as AI is dangerous for us, AGI is dangerous, it will be hateful, it will be offensive, but these are not quite intrinsic features of the chatbot they presented. And 
Well, for now, why we also should care, due to uh, recent news, uh, as Elon Musk acquired finally Twitter, he stated that they will launch the company for free speech. And what is free speech? And whether they will actually consider hate speech to be a kind of free speech or it should be banned. And there are a lot of issues and a lot of consequences that we can face in the near future due to not fully understanding what is hate speech and how we actually should deal with it. So after taking into account the list of features that was stated before, we also considered, okay, how can we actually, what can we apply in order to distinguish these hateful tweets or Reddit comments? Uh, and we can see that the state of the art, um, basically models is BIOS TM and Static Bird uh, that actually performs the best right now. Of course, there are a lot of other things that, use, uh, that are used by Twitter, Microsoft, but they, we can see that they are still not as much efficient. And we decided to get our product that we are designing at NASC uh, that is called Stylometrics. And Stylometrics is basically the feature representation, a vector representation with features of the text. These features are mostly grammarly related or syntax syntactic related. They have no semantic, they have no meaning in the, so they don't consider that like Glovi or Vortovec. And they are normalized, so you get the vector of features that are normalized. They are reproducible because you can track them. You can actually see what metric was applied at this particular case. And they are customizable as Stylometrics is free for users and you can actually experiment with it. Uh, so you can add also your metrics. It's really easy, quickly and you can get the output, the full vector, or just the part of vector that you actually wanted to get from the text. So we decided to run the experiment uh, and to distinguish what features are actually um, related to hate speech or offensive language, uh, and whether these features are mostly grammar related, or they will get better performance with, for example, Glovi, so semantically related, and first that we can see is actually adjective, comparative adjectives, and then this SY means the syntactic features. So it states that actually a lot of tweets and a lot of writing can be distinguished only by syntactic features, not only semantic ones that were used, for example, with BioSTM and, 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 um, and BERT, because they are semantic, and we moved further, and we actually ran the experiment on 400, um, so 40,463 uh, tweets. That was the synthetic data set from Kaggle. Uh, and just on simple classifiers like linear regression and random forest, we achieved 78% recall for hate speech, which is not bad because these are just the syntactic representation. So this is just grammar, no meaning at all. You just look at the sentence, at, at the structure of the sentence. And then we decided to combine them with actually Globy, the semantic representation, and we got, well, more or less 3% better results. And also for hate and for neutral, uh, we just put them into voting classifier, and we got pretty decent results, even compared to Bilas TM and BERT, which are huge language models that are quite popular right now. Then we ran the experiment with just pre-trained Roberta. This is not fine-tuned Roberta that you can stumble upon in many articles that say, oh, we got 1% achievement with fine-tuning. We didn't do any fine-tuning just for the sake of the experiment. Uh, and we got 1% better results. So it means that you can actually fine-tune and you could adjust even the simplest 
Roberta embeddings, semantic embeddings, with syntactic structure analysis, and it will give you better results. It will, be, it will give you better precision and recall on hate speech. And then we also did the experiment with Wicop uh, and with Polish data. So for the Polish model, we got even higher, 89% for hate, just simply with syntactic representation. So with the syntactic vectors that we got from the stylometrics. We also ran that on a voting classifier, as well as concatenated, um, yes, so uh, as well with getting, yes, so then will be Roberta. But here, as you can see, we even increased the number of classes. So we took three classes, and we still achieved quite decent results in detecting hate speech out of them. And also, we concatenated that right now with fine-tuned Roberta, and we got quite, um, well, quite high improvement and also very good uh, precision and recall for neutral speech detection, as, as well as hate classes, and there were three of them, uh, neutral, offensive, and hate. And this is the product we are working on at NASC right now. It will be developed even for more languages, uh, as we are based on Spacey, and uh, as Spacey produce a lot of models for Spanish, German, and for example, Ukrainian right now. So we will continue working on the text representation, text vector representation. And I hope that some of you will try and use our, well, our mini model, so to say, and try it on your own and see how it works, for example, for your data and for your text. And I that you will be a bit amazed because, well, sometimes based drill approach is still working and working really decently compared with the large data models that you have right now. And as for the trigger for you to be f tuned, we have also Twitter page, of course, because we're dealing with Twitters. Um, it was tweets, uh, and we will continue with the Ukrainian language and with Ukrainian model, uh, because I am native in Ukrainian, and it will be also interesting because for Ukrainian, you don't have any data, any data sets, decent data sets for now, but we will present results, I hope, next time with Ukrainian compared to Polish. Thank you.